Now, LifeAdministration.com presents the Life Administration Podcast. Here are your hosts, Leslie Loftus and Ryan Taylor. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Life Administration Podcast. My name is Ryan Talon, and with me, as always, is Leslie Loftus. Hello, everyone. Welcome Good morning, back. Leslie. How are you doing? Doing all right. Yeah. Than you. What are you talking? Listen, <laughs> I am fine. Y'all have been on me about my attitude, and I'm fine. He's, no. <laughs> he's a little salty today because the toddler joined um, joined them in bed last night, and Toddler's thrash. Listen, it's like, it's like, I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden she just became like a really physical sleeper. It's the only way that I can explain it. Three weeks ago, she comes into the bed at 430, doesn't move a muscle. The past couple days, it's like Flopping she's fish. learning Taekwondo while she's sleeping is the only way that I can explain it. I mean, I'm getting more kicks and more punches. Uh, yeah. And definitely it, not sleep. Def- and definitely not sleep. Yep. But I have I have tea that you have fashioned me there with. There we go. So my voice Lauren, stays in see, check. I got, I got him tea this time. So, yeah. yeah. I won't be yelled at by my wife. Mm-hmm. So I, cause he's I go- been, I've been going, like, how in the world do you do? Because we do, like, three or four of these at a time. And he's not drinking anything while he did. I'm like, how do you do that? Strong like, like bull. Me need no, <laughs> no liquid. <laughs> <laughs> and you anyway. have no voice when you get home, but okay. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Okay, so episode 14, cooking, basic kitchen functionality. Basic kitchen. Mm-hmm. Here we go. So um, what are we talking about when we say basic kitchen? What, is, what does that even mean? Like, am I all going to listen to this podcast and I'm going to be able to cook like Gordon Ramsay? No. Is he a guest today? No. No, he didn't show up, huh? He didn't show. Sorry, ah. we called him. Actually, we didn't. But. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is more the basics of running a kitchen so okay. that you can do the practice to, you know, maybe one day you're going to have the mad skills like Gordon Ramsay. But mm-hmm. um, this is, you know, the life administration stuff, the practical kind of boring stuff. You know, what kind of things do you need? Um, how do you set up a schedule for going shopping? How do you make a menu? You know, yeah. I- fun stuff that if you don't have set up makes things very Difficult because then you're constantly going to the grocery store at like five o'clock in the afternoon or whatever when it's ridiculously busy and oh shoot what am I going to get and oh rotisserie chicken and something on the side and there we go and you know and then you're that commercial with the kids walking around um, I don't remember what commercial it was but it was kind of cute they had they'd made a robot out of rotisserie chicken cans and they were walking around like our boxes yeah it was hysterical I think a couple years one ago. of the I guess barriers to entry. It's the only way I can really think about putting it is like, I always think about time when it's mm-hmm. time to cook. Like there, there is this time commitment. Yes. Um, you know, so like, okay. I used, there used to be a show. I think Rachel Ray did. It was called like 30 minute meals. And you're right. like, you're like, awesome. I can get a meal on on the table in 30 minutes. That, that's fantastic. But like, there that's a bug not coming. Yes. true. Right. Cause there's the shopping, bef- like to put on the 30 minute meal, you had to have the stuff in the fridge in the pantry. You sure did. You had to have the device. You know, I mean, if you're already an established cook, if you already have, you know, basic cooking skills, if you already have a basic kitchen, then yes, 30-minute meals are possible. Yes. Right. This here, is how you get to that stage. And, and here is the issue. And I, and I would believe that most of our listeners slash viewers uh, would agree that if it's your first time making something... You don't necessarily know the ingredients. Right. But more importantly, you probably don't know where they are in your kitchen. So like for me, my spice rack, it needs some help, right? Mm-hmm. We basically have it in like these three general areas where it's like hot, seasoning, and then everything else, right? So- <clears throat> Well, then back to one of our basic things of zones. Here's where I store the spices. Here's it like, eventually we'll do a tour of my pantry. You know, there's a shelf for baking goods. Um, there's a shelf for, you know, like chips and snacks and stuff like that. So, and then I do have one space right at my range mm-hmm. where I keep the stuff that I use on a regular basis, like all the time, you know, one, two, mm-hmm. three motion storage. Yep. So the stuff that I'm always using, the dried oregano is right there, or at least some of the dried oregano because otherwise it'll go bad quickly, but that's you know, advanced level. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But you have general zone. So you know where your stuff, I know where my fruit is stored in the refrigerator, not just everything's shoved in the refrigerator. And so then I got to go looking for it to even see if I have it, to even see if I need to buy it to make the 30 minute meal that sounded like a really great idea. Yeah. And then like, that's not even including like cleanup afterwards. Right. right? So then there's that piece of, oh, I really want to cook or I really want to eat a certain way. Do I have the proper ingredients? Okay, I have the ingredients. Where are they in my kitchen? Okay, I actually don't know where they're at in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. So it took me 30 minutes just to like get that part down. Um, Then I actually have to cook the thing. And oh, by the way, the first time that you make something, it never necessarily goes according to plan. Um, You're always kind of like dunking and diving a little bit to make some adjustments. Even if it's just scrambled eggs. Yep, Yep. there's always always some kind of thing there. Mm -hmm. Um, And then... The last piece is the cleanup piece. And and so now I look at it like, let's say, because I work kind of weird hours sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's not unusual for me to get home later than most people eat dinner. Uh, If I get home at 730 or 8 and it's an hour and a half process to get this whole thing up and going, that means I'm eating Mm -hmm. dinner between 930 and 10. Right. And then I have to put the stuff away. And oh, by the way, like I'd like to have some night where I get to maybe watch a TV show or, right. you know, go hang out with my friends or, or whatever. Right. So. And so suddenly Whataburger seems like a good option or oh, a like bowl the, of cereal yeah. seems like it's a good option. It's Taco Tuesday every right. day. Yeah. Yeah. We love. Yeah. So um, I, I'm really looking forward to like really simplifying the process. Right. Um, and, and sort of understanding how I can get that hour and a half window. Well, there are some tricks, but. Mostly, this is one of those tasks that it's very front. Like, it's going to take you a while to get your pantry in order. It's going to take a while to get your fridge in order. It's going to take a while to build up the habits for regular grocery runs, that sort of thing. Um, it's going to take a while to practice your skills so that you can do some of the basic cooking skills that make the 30 minute meals possible. Mm-hmm. Once you have put in a lot of that base time, all of a sudden you'll start to get the dividends of, oh, a 30-minute meal really is a 30-minute meal plus maybe five, 10 minutes cleanup out and prep time, you know, yeah, that uh, sort of thing. But you have to have all of these predicates set beforehand, and those are time intensive. Yeah, I think for me, it says basic kitchen, but there's really, it's like how to prepare your kitchen for success. Mm-hmm. Really, like that's that's what, what I'm looking for. And, and I think... That's a really good point to make that it's not like you're going to say, okay, I'm going to be able to do X, Y, and Z. And now all of a sudden, like, I'm going to be able to cook way more often. Uh, Right. If you want to set a goal for yourself, first of all, this would be if you happen to be watching this episode, I don't know, around the New Mm -hmm. Year's, giving yourself a year to, you know, say for the first quarter, I'm going to work on getting my pantry and fridge and order my stocking and order Um, for the second quarter, I'm going to work on making sure I have the equipment that I need to do, you know, like you could break it down that way. But really most of these things we are talking about between clean out, organizing, um, figuring out what you need, setting new habits, learning new skills, it's not crazy to give yourself six months over a year to get no, this not, done. Not, not, not at all. Not, not at all. all. I mean, you this... shouldn't see improvement as you're going along. Absolutely. It's not like, but. Remember uh, we used to teach this in high school? We did. We sure did. I mean, I took, I took that class, um, mm-hmm. home economics. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. I, I, I'm... Now they teach cooking in school. So one of my daughters is taking cooking. But frankly, I've. They still do cooking? Of... Yes. Um, but it's it's lost a lot of, but it's. It, Cooking then, so it's lost some of the stuff about kitchen prep, the stuff right. that we're going to go into Good. today. A, um, B, one of once you get this established, and then you start to have older kids, then it's really easy to on ramp kids. So by the time my daughter was taking cooking in school, well, she could do most of the things that they were, you know, especially when they were in the really early stages mm-hmm. doing, say, fried eggs. Mm-hmm. She does. She makes her own breakfast all the time. Um, That's actually one of the things just to kind of lift you guys up. I remember when I first met you all and I saw the kids like legitimately cooking, you know, and they were younger at this. This was five years ago almost. Right. Exactly. Um, So the twins were five. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really shifted my perception of like what right looks like there Mm -hmm. and like getting cooking. Anyway, that's an episode for another time. So let's focus yeah, on... got to get this stuff yeah, right yeah, first. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. what areas are we going to be focused on today? What what things are we going to be talking about that's going to round out our, our converse, conversation? Wow. My <laughs> accent is kicking today. Boston boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we need to have um, food storage um, mm-hmm. pre, you know, I've just bought it at the grocery store and leftovers post- um, food storage, post cooking storage, mm-hmm. um, fruit, food prep stuff. You need to have the basics for that. Um, 
food cooking, obviously, um, and then service, serving, um, serving your meals and cleaning. Right. Okay, cool. Um, so what do we need to have? 100%. Okay. My list is going to be very, very bare bones. One. Two, I will have, um, you'll see on the website that you can sign up for um, some of the PDFs. This will be one of the cheat sheets that we're giving off. So I will mm -hmm. have this on a checklist. You don't have to stop driving or whatever and take notes right now. Okay. Again, very, very bare bones list. I'm assuming you don't know any, or you're moving out. You've just graduated from college. Um, you are moving into your first apartment. The days of ramen noodles are over. The days of ramen noodles and Sadly. a hot plate are over. <laughs> exactly. And the days of having a cafeteria, you know, where you could go to the um, school mess hall and get your stuff. Those are over as well. Mm -hmm. The days of mom and dad cooking for you. Those are over. Bare bones. Okay. Um, so for food storage, obviously you need pantry and fridge or a cabinet, you know, you, you need some place to st store the dry goods, um, that you don't need to refrigerate and you mm -hmm. need some place to store the things that you do need to refrigerate and freeze. Um, what kind of apartment you get, what area of the world you live in. For instance, if, um, when we were in England, my refrigerator freezer was about the size of my freezer now. Hmm. So actually it was a little smaller. Um, it was a step up from a dorm fridge on the top of a dorm fridge. Um, so you kind of got to work with what you work with because that is going to affect how frequently you go to the grocery store or stuff like that. Okay. Um, you need to sort it airtight containers for storing dry goods. Okay. Not everybody's going to need this. We are in Houston where it is humid and great. So stuff, you open anything um, and it doesn't matter how tightly you seal or what it's going to go stale relatively quickly. Um, so airtight containers for food storage. I don't necessarily decant them though. So like I have flour storage containers that you just drop the bag of flour into the airtight mm -hmm. storage. Mm -hmm. um, Cause you know, decanting looks pretty on the Pinterest stuff, but it's kind of a pain in the tush. But I think we'll talk about that a little bit in the mini cast tour. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you need something for leftover storage. Personally, I tend to use the um, reuse takeout containers, um, you know, the pl specifically the black plastic ones with the clear tops, or I use glass ones because with leftover containers, um, clear is key. You need to be able to see what's in it. When I was growing up, my mom was great about reusing stuff. So it was not uncommon for us to have, say, four or five sour cream containers in the fridge only one had sour cream, um, and it was hard then to tell if you actually had the sour cream or not. Was it sour but, cream, though, or was it mayonnaise? Uh, uh, well, no, no, but it would be like, then, you know, we had green beans for dinner, and then the other one yeah. would have green. But you had to go, and you had to open each. So all four reduce and reuse, absolutely on reuse. There's plenty of stuff these days that's clear. Um, reuse the clear mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah, for your post-leftover storage, you want clear things that you can see through. I have two questions. Yes. One of the things that is a barrier to entry for me is sort of the conundrum of food storage containers and their lids. Mm -hmm. Is there a practical way to, to, to figure that out? Sometimes it, that is going to depend on the space you have, mm -hmm. really. Um, how much of it you have. Um, for instance, I have a little bit more storage space now because I have a larger kitchen, mm -hmm. large family. So I tend to store things stacked, Got almost it. like a tiered cake. If you're, so you yeah, actually just keep the lid on. I the I keep thing. the lid on yep. the thing, or I nest it reverse, so I have the lids underneath, and then I nest the glass containers on top of the lids, so they're all right there together. But I have more space to because that's kind of a space hungry way mm -hmm. to store it. Um, another one that people use um, that I've used in the past is you know store all of the square containers or the round containers or whatever with each other, and then um, use a filing. Um, oh, those wire. Um, yeah, it's file. like a dish rack almost. It's, it's almost like a dish rack, yep. yep. And you can do that. You can also use this for pot lids, um, but it's a really cheap, easy um, way to kind of, so you can kind of go through them like like a file folder. Yeah. Um, also, have one or two drawers, have one or two cabinets where you store that you don't need to save 
everything. You don't need to have a storage thing for every single possibility. Because the fact is, even if you have leftovers for three days, you're only keeping them for about three days. Or I tend to use leftovers once and do them. So you'll be rotating clean stuff that you don't actually need five drawers full of post service Tupperware. Tupperware. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't need five drawers full of Tupperware. Absolutely not. So limit yourself. Say, this is my space where I store this stuff. And when you run out of space there, you don't need any more. I sort of just had this thought where it reminds me of the closet situation where Very similar. you have, yeah, you have like these four containers that you use over and over and over again. Yep. And then the rest are just in case. Right. Um, and they're just space that yeah. th- that you have to knock things out of the way to get four that you like to use. Yep. Um, and again, maybe there is the casserole one that you use every Thanksgiving and every Christmas. So put it up on the high shelf so yep. that you have to get, you know, two, three motion yep. storage. You have to get the little step ladder out. By the way, keep one of those in your kitchen. That's um, uh, You need to get the little step ladder thing out so you can go get that twice a year. I Done. think I think too, um, and I'm gonna try this actually because I'm just thinking through the process. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe color coding the things like this lid, like with a piece of colored electrical tape. Well, or something. and some of yeah. some of the sets come that way. Yep. Um, you can certainly do a piece of electrical tape or duct tape. Lots of fun. You can do that yep. that way the, as well. The, the moral of the story here is that you have to have some sort of system because it right. can get out of control and you cannot find the things that you're looking for. Um, Right. But unless you're in catering or something like that, really the idea that you need say more than a dozen assorted containers. Yeah. Yeah. That even, yeah, it seems like a lot. (laughs) Exactly. I also like, um, for leftovers to preparing the leftovers ahead of time. So like Thanksgiving is the one that always sticks out in my, my mind is that we do having flashes of Ross's sandwich. Are you telling a Ross's sandwich story? It's basically the same thing. It's like we, you, but after it's done, we have these containers that are, have like partitions in them, Mm -hmm. you know? And so we'll make the meal, put it in there. So all you have to do is heat it up. Mm -hmm. Doing stuff like that, I think is, is really, it takes an extra step during the cooking phase or the cleanup phase. But man, like, I don't know about you guys. It makes but a huge I, difference when you're coming in and you just want to grab the meal quick. Um, got it. Yeah. They're um, bento boxes, um, yeah. storage. Yeah. I have a couple of those that I use, kids use those for lunch. Um, and I've been known to use those for exactly the same thing. Well, and I tend to use them. Let's say, oh, like right now there's only three of us in the household, my husband, my son, and the three girls are at camp. Um, so when I'm doing some prep work ahead of time, well, I can easily say it's hard for me to do the uh, make and freeze meal stuff mm-hmm. because, and especially with leftovers, because there's six plus of us at any given time. So I can't make enough to, or I can't freeze enough from the leftovers. Sure. To, right. When I have a period like this, however, I can make three separate meals for us, stick them in the little bento box organizers and stick them in the freezer and use it. So, okay. Those are helpful. So I think we got food storage pretty much Whoops. covered. <laughs> uh, food prep. So okay. what are, yeah, what do we need food there? For prep. Food prep here again, I'm going to be very bare bones. I would say a medium stock pot. So, you know, the big, we'll go through this on the mini cast. I'll pull out the different things. Mm-hmm. Again, this is a small, basic, just starter kitchen, medium stock pot, an omelet pan, preferably nonstick. And I would get not the little tiny eight inch one, but a slightly larger one that can do, you know, a two or three egg omelet. Um, for both of those, you might find it more economical to buy one of the sets, you know, the pot sets that come yes. along. Because um, oftentimes they are cheaper to buy together than they are mm-hmm. as separate pieces. Uh, that's great if you do um, get one of the smaller sets because one of the big giants, you end up with pans that you don't, I can't remember. Oh, Jim and I do use saute pans on occasion basically because we're making a big meal and we have run out of other pans Mm -hmm. i don't ever reach for my saute pan as a general rule and we have lots of cooks in our family so Mm -hmm. i mean we'll get into this in a second a lot of this depends on your own cooking skills and your own needs um but that'll be when we're refining it so one stock pot one medium omelet pan um highly recommend a cast iron skillet I know lots of people will say they're heavy, they're easy care, um, and they brown beautifully. They're just, if you have one, um, when you start to use one, they are just your go-to for everything. I have, um, I'd say we use our stock, our cast iron 
three, four times a it's week. It's your go-to. It's our go-to. Yeah. It's our go-to. Um, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm looking at my list here. Yeah. Um, jelly roll. Jelly roll sheet or two. So those are the cookie sheets with the lips. Oh, yeah, yeah, The yeah, edges, yeah, yeah. right, so the, the rectangular ones. Um, these are the great kitchen multitaskers. You can use them for all sorts of things. Um, so if you end up with four or five of these, that's fine. You pr- you really need one or two, um, and then depending on the type of cook you turn out to be. Um, but they're cheap, they're simple, and they can do 2,000 things in the kitchen. Um, oh, did I just move that? Okay. There we go. I did. And then a casserole dish. Mm-hmm. Um, so a pie dish or a casserole dish. So those are the ceramic ones that you stick in the oven. Okay. Um, so you're making a, las- a lasagna pan. Essentially. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, but you can use them for all sorts of things that you would need to roast. You can make a roasting pan out of them. Um, they're very, very versatile, very easy, mm-hmm. um, simple to use. Uh, they need to be oven safe, obviously. It's a casserole dish, so it should be. Um, you need a chef's knife. That's the slightly curved, longer, longer one, the basic kitchen mm-hmm. knife. Um, a paring knife, which is the smaller one used for cutting smaller vegetables and fruits and stuff. Um, a serrated knife, um, particularly tomatoes don't do very well with a thin blade, especially if you're not keeping them sharp on a regular basis. So you need a serrated knife, bread also, um, Cut that with a serrated knife. Um, you need a couple of spoons and spatulas, whether you want to use silicone, wood, kind of your preference. Mm-hmm. Um, measuring cups and spoons, a set of each. Um, a strainer. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's really, really basic. I want to emphasize something. Mm-hmm. Having good knives is critical. Having a good eye, which is one of the reasons why there's only three knives on here. And it's more important for the paring knife and the chef's knife than it is serrated knife. I mean, it gets its work out of friction from, right. So you can buy a cheaper serrated knife, but a good chef's knife. mm -hmm. It's it's one of those things, you know, in football, they talk about these things called hidden yards. So for Mm -hmm. an example would be like, if you get the other teams that come off sides, you get five yards. Like that doesn't show up in any stats anywhere, but it's still five yards. To me, the kitchen knife is the exact same thing. Having a good kitchen knife saves you so much time from, oh, I didn't cut this right. Oh, I cut my finger. Oh, I had to Uh hold it a weird way because I couldn't get it in. Mm -hmm. It's like, you want that baby to say, go right on through. Um, And that just, to me makes such a big difference also um keeping them sharp too Mm -hmm. and and, you know this and you can get small little tabletop um sharpeners one you can get the sometimes they come with the the one that you do yourself um and then one of the things you should put on your to-do list for say every six months or so is to have your knives sharpen just take them to your local home depot or hardware Mm -hmm. store or something and even if your edge has gotten terrible they can regrind an edge yeah but yeah maintaining your knives Critical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm a big fan of the, you know, these things you put on your, your counter, mm-hmm. you hit it four times and you're yep. done. Um, each time you use it. Yeah. Right. Yep. So each time you're going out to use it, just. And it, it just makes such, such a mm-hmm. big difference. Um, okay, great. So service. service. Yes. Okay. Um, so this is your plates and your, you know, stainless place setting, you know, forks, knives, spoons, that sort of stuff. I recommend getting how many in your household plus maybe four. So um, six of us in this household um, plus four. So I would have a minimum of 10 places that handles guests that might come over and gives you a little bit of wiggle room for washing. Mm -hmm. Um, Depending on later on, if you find that you entertain more or something, obviously you would add more pieces on, et cetera, et cetera. So we're talking dinner plates, um, salad bowls, um, utensil place settings, um, and then you need a couple of serve bigger serving spoons um, and probably a ladle, um, and that's that'll start you out for basic as well. Okay. okay, so it's not a ton of stuff. I mean, the reality is is that you can right. get pots and pans. Like you can spend 150 bucks, get all of this stuff. Yes. And, and have everything that you need to really kind of set your, your to kitchen up to start to learn the successful. basic stuff. Yep. Right. Okay. Um, and then also. Um, I'm an Alton Brown alkalite, so I wouldn't get it. I don't like unitaskers as he, he often says, um, what, the, what is a unitasker? Things that can only be used for one thing. Right. right. Okay. So the only unitasker allowed in Alton Brown's kitchen is a fire extinguisher. Got it. Um, completely 
that is a huge kitchen hack. Um, gotcha. So every so things little gadgety things like you know avocado slicers. Careful. Oh, okay. Somebody's going to talk about gadgets. I have just now heard about some of his gadgets. We'll wait till we get to we'll the. Would we'll like to, to have section. Part. Everyone just relax. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lot of very gadgety things that you can find that are really one use items. They tend to be yeah. clutter. Yeah. And, no, and stuff that you have I to agree. maintain and clean and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and by the way, um, Good Eats is the, the name of the show. Highly recommended for basic cooking lessons because it kind of does the science behind it. And it is restarting again in August or September. I can't remember. I'm just a little They're excited. sponsoring us. Oh, wait. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. No, I just like the show. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we got the must-haves out of the way. Mm-hmm. So... Next, the next category is would like to have. So, okay. what comes after sort of we got the bare bones essentials? Okay, I'm going to be a broken record on this part. So much of this depends on the type of cook that you are and the type of family that you have. Um, an accomplished chef, for instance, will have so many more. Th- they're probably thinking that that list is completely and totally inadequate, mm-hmm. but also they know their way around the kitchen enough that they've probably. They don't really need a tutorial on how to do a basic kitchen. Um, uh, if you're going to cook lots of stews, chilies, that sort of thing, then you probably need um, another stock pot and stock pots of various sizes. Um, if you are, you'd like to do a lot of baked goods and stuff, then you're going to need a muffin pan. You're going to need jelly, more jelly roll pans. You're going to need a plain old cookie sheet. Those are the ones without the edges. Um, you know, specifics like that. If you are, um, if you prefer eating bowl meals, you know, one bowl meal, well, then you need more bowls for service mm-hmm. and of varying sizes and stuff because it kind of depends on what you're eating on how, the vessel that you serve it in. Um, families with babies and toddlers, stick blender will be a must have. Absolutely. That is a, a right. lesson that I wish that I had learned. I didn't get one of those quickly enough. And it, and once you got it, you're like, <sighs> yeah. Yes. I to me it's all if you have if you have kiddos that are young mm-hmm. that's almost a must have like mm-hmm. I it, it, I know I mean I get right, yeah, why yeah. we would put it would like to have because we right. can figure because out because it well it's and it's situational but yes if yeah. you have an under two you need a stick blender yeah you um, and honestly do. they're just way more convenient than like a normal blender honestly like they Absolutely. just really are they're easier to clean they're yeah. easier to pull out easier to use and then it's also easier so you're picking you know the turkey dinner that you have um, you know and you're pureeing it up so your little one can eat it it's because you know the bowls aren't much bigger than the than this coffee mug mm-hmm. and you need to stick the stick blender in yeah. and if anybody needs proof of why why we're saying this there is a show on netflix called chef the last episode they have to use a manual a regular blender instead of a stick blender because they like forgot it or something and i mean literally the show's 22 minutes long 16 minutes of them are, are blending like i right. mean it just it's so out of control so it's a huge time saver so that's right. my yeah and um, it's so much easier to clean than a regular blender it's not even funny so i want to throw in a couple things on this particular list so the oh f- i did forget to mention yeah yeah, yeah you yeah, cook you did. lots of stews and stuff maybe one of those new pressure cooker one pot things ryan's an acolyte ryan's an aficionado okay so <laughs> the is it instant pot or insta pot? I always forget. Anyway, honestly, I don't know. Either just the second one. Sean second says one, the second, second one. one. Insta okay. pot. Insta pot. All right. So first off, I think it is probably you know if you catch it on sale on Amazon, probably like fifty or sixty dollars. The versatility of this particular device. It, it, it's it's amazing. It, it does anything that you can dream of. It comes with a cookbook. It makes it so easy and and the re. The thing about it is, is that you don't have to watch it, you know? And so things that would take you hours to put together, like a good stew or a good soup, you know, might take four hours to really like bring that flavor out. By the way, it doesn't actually, I was afraid of stews when I first got married too. And they sound daunting. They're not. They're but not. Any, but yes, no. but no, pressure yeah. cookers are well known for the, cause you know, you stick everything in and then you leave it and yeah. you come back to food later. It's I great. totally get it, with, and especially with tinies around. Yep, I mean it's it's takes nothing for me to mm-hmm. take 
uh, some frozen chicken breast, throw it in there, throw some veggies in, and then 17 minutes later have a meal that is ready to go. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, you just can't, you know, for One me- One of my sister-in-laws would sing the same praises. Yeah, yes. yeah. One of the sa- the things for me is, is when you're looking up recipes, everything has to be fresh. Everything has to be fresh. And like the reality is, is that Lauren and I were not on that rotation where it's like, okay, on this day we eat this, we on the, right? We just, we're not. We're like- what do we have? Well, Let's cook everything it. has to be fresh. Also requires more going to the grocery right. store, which you just don't really have at no at the kids at home stage. No, and, and I want to be able to go into my freezer, get something that's nutritionally viable, mm-hmm. right? I don't want. Which, by the way, vegetables that are you know because they're flash frozen. Fruits and vegetables are flash frozen when they're so sometimes. It is better to do the frozen fruit that's been frozen or frozen veggies that's been frozen properly than buy the green beans fresh, not use them for a week, and then pull them out. And I mean, right? Yeah, I the, you took the words right out of my mm-hmm. mouth. Go to the, get frozen bag of veggies, get mm-hmm. some chicken, bang, you got dinner, done deal. Um, and another thing that's great about the instant pot or insta pot, thanks, uh, is. <laughs> It's one pot. <laughs> so cleaning it up is is an absolute breeze. Well, you know I'm, what I I'm mean? excited for fall coming up because that's one of my major fall cheats. I tend to cook a lot of stews um, in the fall. And dude, so it's a cutting board and the pot that I made the stew in for the most part. Yeah. Because, you know, you brown. Yeah, I do have a little bit of switching out from bowls, you know, because you brown the meat or you brown the, usually the veg, the mirepoix, the mm-hmm onions and carrots and stuff like that um and then um you'd brown the meat and you take the meat out typically and then stick the other stuff in and then stick the meat back in you know yeah that sort of format um but yeah it's brilliant because yeah. there's one thing to, yeah really and, one thing and to clean. All, some of the newer ones have like saute functions so you don't even have to do that sort mm-hmm. of stuff you can just saute it then dump the stuff in after uh which is really cool another thing that i have struggled with is cutting vegetables that takes a long time. And so a vegetable slicer of some sort, Mandolin. you know, that's like $15 that has maybe three or four different blade settings that you can get, you know, where you just kind of put that's, the thing in and crank it and it's done. I that's mean, like, nice. Now the one, the one drawback to mandolin, do you not have a mandolin? Uh, no, I do have one, but okay. it, it sometimes takes a little too long. Well, it just takes, um, they're a bit, you know, you got to pick out your blade. Yeah. Now you are 100% like... For instance, when Jim and I are cooking stews in the fall, and especially if we're having anybody over, there's nothing that beats cutting the potatoes or some of the veg. Agreed. With that, it's so much faster. If you're only doing it for two or three people, eh, no big deal. Knife. Get a knife. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, I think for me, I think of like spiralizing too, like uh, like doing zucchini noodles or something mm-hmm. like that. That just makes it way easier to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's enough for me. So get it, get yourself an Insta pot instapot okay you think he, i would know after like the fourth he, yeah, time saying it they Sean. are not they are obviously not a sponsor <laughs> <laughs> okay for the record we have no sponsors <laughs> no we bring this to you free of exactly stuff whatever that what's the word that you, you like you know when when you clutter have like, clutter yeah but you know like if we were if we were sponsored by Instant Pot, then we would be like, this would be all about Instant Pot, right? Instead of just like a little... Instead of like our bi- honest bias, opinion. Bias, yeah. bias, <laughs> bias. Good. Excellent. The man in the back. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Yep. Three hours of sleep. That's what I'm. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Shifting gears. Yes. So we talked about shopping a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let's expand upon that. Is there a best day, a best way? There are new food services. Like, I just sort of feel like this is changing. Like, how people go it shopping is, is changing. One I completely agree. How people go shopping is changing. And and it's kind of lagging because how people have needed to shop um, has – that changed long ago, but the systems weren't really changing. And so now we're seeing mm-hmm. some of that. Okay. Still, some of the old ways hold sway. Um, at least in America, it's different in Europe. Um, two days, two shopping days. I recommend one major shopping day, um, and then one kind of pick it up, produce, um, catch all things, or maybe you're going to catch, you're going to cook fish on Friday night. I recommend buying fit. There's some things that really do need to be fresh. Um, uh, to buy fish the day that you're going to cook it, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So one major shopping day a week, um, from the 
mini cast on to-do lists. As y'all know, I tend to do that on Tuesdays and Fridays. So Tuesday is my major shop day and Friday is my um, mini pickup shop day. Um, or sometimes Jim will do it on Saturdays because he likes to take the kids to a local market and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's been their thing for a very long time. And Goodness gracious, I don't argue with that. <laughs> oh, you want to take the kids? My yes, guess. and go get the produce and everything. <laughs> Excellent. Perfect. Goodbye. <laughs> take the dog, too. Yeah, Actually, right. the dog now goes to the market, too. She loves it. But um, then I also try to streamline some of my bulk purchases, um, things like paper towels, toilet paper, cleaning products. So maybe the first Tuesday of every month, I'll also add a Target run in. Mm -hmm. um, or you can set this up on Amazon. Subscribe and say, like there's delivery services that can do some of this stuff that's not heat sensitive. You don't really need to worry. So it all that stuff comes to my door now. Dog food, toilet paper, um, paper towels, mm -hmm. uh, there's some I mean, things you're like you're going to use all the time, regardless, no matter right. what. But also, you know, you you know, you can store them up like they're not perishable. So you can do that, and you can get a huge a huge shop once a month, mm -hmm. and not have to worry about bulking up your weekly shop. So now, even if you are going to the grocery store two times a week, because I actually don't go two times a week, I do an Instacart order mm -hmm. one. Day, that's usually for my major one and then the fine tuning one on Friday I do myself right. at the grocery store we'll talk about another hack in a second um, but even if you're going yourself both times if you only have one bulk shopping a month then it just it makes everything go fast so your weekly run is not as cluttered it's much faster it's much easier to come home and put away because it's really mostly food stuffs and you don't you're not you're not hauling in the big old toilet paper thing and stuff like mm. that you know get a costco card and do that once a month um so that's the rhythm part here mine. so Shut for in. for delivery uh so delivery is i i sort of have two mindsets uh, of delivery yes i love the fact that it's convenient mm -hmm. I dislike the fact that I think is it kind of traps you in a box. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is what I get every single time. I, I gotta, you know, I get my my chicken or I get my rice mm -hmm. or whatever. There's something about. I have other people that don't like the fact that they're not picking their own produce because they want to go feel the melons themselves. And, and and to be honest, like these folks work for the grocery stores in most cases, mm -hmm. and so like they are trying to move their lettuce, right? So like for example, when I go to the grocery store and get a bag of lettuce, guess what? I go four bags back. I look for the the latest date, pull that bad boy out, and in mm -hmm. the cart it goes. Right. The chances that they're pulling the it's soonest date. It's not date, happening. Right. They, they, yeah, they're pulling because they want to move it and get right. rid of it, right? Mm -hmm. So then you get your salad two days later. <laughs> it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not great. And my wife is actually the one that tip me off about this because mm -hmm. she's the one that deals with it more more than I do. But um so it is convenient, but you don't get what you're necessarily looking for all the time. Also they'll make like weird substitutions on you sometimes. Mm -hmm. They're just like, no, actually well, like some of the apps now, at least like the Instacart app that's the one I use, has an options that you can say don't you know, if you can't find this, don't replace. Um if you can't find it, here's the specific replacement I want you to look for. Yep. Um so there are options there like are. that. But yeah, you have to it it now. I learned delivery when we were living in London and frankly you would you know, you didn't have a car. The grocery store is a couple blocks away, which is actually brilliant. So mm -hmm. um and we had this small fridge, like I said, kind of dorm room fridge on top of dorm room freezer sort of. And um so we had to shop more often because we couldn't store as much stuff. So trying to do a big shop there was prohibitive because you couldn't store it a and b you couldn't haul it home like i had twins and i had two other children that were close together in age so i had a double stroller so if i only let's say i dropped one child off at um, school and then i only had then i would use that extra seat to pull to bring the goods home didn't always have that so delivery is huge when you live in those kind of urban environments because then you can do a bigger shop and you don't have to worry about hauling at home. Um, we learned to get our stuff that we didn't like. So snacks, granola bars, cereal, all that kind of stuff that it doesn't really matter um, that kind of date. We tended to do our produce shopping. So 
back then it was our major shop was all of our dry goods and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And then we would go um, another day and do our meat and poultry. Mm-hmm. Um, I still have kind of kept that pattern here, even though um, I've started using a delivery service. Um, even then, sometimes you, sometimes you need to go to the shop to do it yourself. Sometimes, like you said, you need to go to the shop just because you do kind of get in a rut, okay? You have, I even have lists set up on my Instacart app. So um, I have a basic staple list. Mm-hmm. I will provide that in the PDFs. Um, and it, then it'll say shop my list and it'll go ahead and populate a search and I can just add things into my cart relatively easy. Totally easy way to shop. Not a great way to try new products. So every once, even when I'm on a huge delivery kick, I'll still go to the grocery store about, one every three or four times just because, well, we're bored of those granola bars and we want to try something new, you know, or, you know, I want to go and get this done myself. Right. I mm-hmm. want chewy instead of crunchy this week. Exactly. And I, I want to go see what's out there. Yeah. No. I, yes. Yeah. Or there's so, a new product you never heard but of. But at the same like time, that. when, say, you're at one of those stages, you've got a new baby in the house, um, you've just moved, um, all sorts of times. There are times that you want to lean on delivery and it is... Fabby, find a good delivery service, get used to how their app works, figure out some of the bells and whistles that you can do on their um, software. And you can also, you can shop at 1030 at night you sure and can. while you're in your pajamas and you're just getting ready for bed and you can set it to be delivered the next day at 10 o'clock yep. and not have to spend anything more than 30 minutes on it. I mean, it's just dead time you wouldn't otherwise be able to use. And, and the delivery charge in most cases is nominal, right? Like, I mean, right. well, I, and especially if you get the yearly subscription, and I recommend if you're using any of these delivery services, get the year subscription so that you get the free delivery. Because if they're individually, you know, each week, if you're getting pinged for five or six bucks, well, that's going to add up quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, if you spend the 75 or 99, which is what they tend to be, mm-hmm. um, for the year of free delivery. Thank you. Worth yep, it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so in game shows, when you get to the end, it's called the lightning round, right? So we are about to go into the lightning round because we're at like the 42-minute mark. And you know how I get around, uh-huh. right? You think I'm salty now once we get past 45 <laughs> minutes. Woo-hoo! All right, so we're going to go into lightning round. We're going to skip ahead a little bit to okay. uh, cleaning. Okay. We're going to we'll, we'll revisit sort of meal prep in the future um okay. cuz I think we could spend a lot of time on that. We on that. um yeah, I'm looking at our notes here. We yep. could spend a considerable amount of so, time on that. And I really want to talk about cleaning. Uh-huh, because because he you, hates it. It's right. And you look at the show notes, <laughs> it's the worst part for me. The, it's one of the main reasons I don't like to cook. Cook. Um so we talked in the the past and we even started talking a little bit in this episode of just this one pot meal. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And utilizing that as much as possible. Right. The more practice you get, cooking is a practical skill. Um, Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of practice. You're going to eat some cardboard. You're going to eat some charcoal. Um, That's the way it goes. The more you practice cooking and some of the basic skills, um, the better you're going to get at it. And then, because one pot meals are a little, they're intermediate cooking. Mm -hmm. You need to have some of these basics. Now, in the show notes below, you will find some links to, frankly, the best resource I have ever seen on basic cooking. And it'll go through some of this stuff that we've talked about today about setting up your kitchen. Um, but also just bas- like how to scramble an egg kind of level stuff mm. is cooking for dummies. You will find the link down there. Highly recommend it. Start doing some of that stuff. Then... Once you get some of the basic skills down, you know, how to do a basic saute, how to do a basic boil or poaching, um, how to basically steam, all of that stuff, then you'll be able to get all, there are tons of one pot options out there from the whole Instapot industry Mm -hmm. to, um, my favorite is Cook's Illustrated Magazine has a series of best recipes and um, also I've linked to those down there. Um, one of their books in that series is Best Skillet Recipes. So it's meals that like they've even come up with an, a way to cook pasta and the sauce all in one skillet. Love it. Love it. Once again, you need to have kind of intermediate cooking skills to be able to do it. But it is huge. Um, then there's everything from... Uh, 
homemade ramens, um, salad, um, egg dishes, a lot of things that you can do in one pot or one casserole mm-hmm. dish. Um, you know, like say egg casseroles, brilliant, easy, easy, easy. One bowl to like whisk everything together. Oh, if you're going to do sausage and bacon in it, mm-hmm. you need to do that in a separate thing. But otherwise, you know, whisk it up, dump it in the greased casserole dish, bake it. Yep. You're done. Yep. Um, you're talking about then one pan and one chopping board or one bowl for your prep. Okay. So my next question is, <laughs> I have a joke here, but I'm going to refrain from using it. I've, <laughs> I've heard it said clean as you go. Right. And then in our show notes, of what joke you might have. Well, well what, <laughs> what are these words that you have that, that are not English underneath the question? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, practice mise en place. You've seen this in every cooking show that you have ever. It, it, it's the actual cooking term. It is the actual cooking term. Mise en place, of course, it's a French term. Yep, of for, course it's a French yes. term. Okay. <laughs> every cooking show you've ever seen, they go ahead and they have little, you know, they have little prep dishes of, so they put the egg in. So they've prepped everything beforehand before they start cooking. Okay, so they've measured things out. They've sliced the onions and then the onions are in a little prep bowl, um, that sort of thing. You can use your regular salad bowls from your service set, whatever. Um, So if you start to practice mise en place, not only is it easier to do the cooking on the other side because then you're like, oh, shoot, the meat is not burning while you're trying to get Mm -hmm. the next thing chopped up and put in, which is the main reason it's done. But also... So you've measured all your stuff, you've shredded things, you've cut things, you've sliced things, and now you've got them in a line in, um, in front of you ready to go. You can pause for a moment, or maybe even while you put on the heat on the pan to let it warm up, and put the other stuff away. Yep. Um, but it comes with practice. I mean, it sounds like a dumb thing, just like, oh my gosh, just clean as you go. But learning how quickly different things, how quickly the pan heats up, how quickly the eggs cook, how quickly the water boils and overflows with the pasta in it, all of those things just come with practice and you clean as you go is using those gaps, those little lulls in the Mm -hmm. actual cooking process to take, okay, I'm going to take this over and I'm going to rinse this out in the sink, or I'm going to go put the flour canister back in the pantry, that sort of thing. Until you know those kind of things um, and how long those gaps are, you can't effectively really clean as you go. So mise en place is a wonderful cooking process. Set up everything, all of your ingredients before you start cooking, then pause and put away all of your prep items. Cooking is time management. Cooking is time management. Like straight up. Like like if if you know the timing on things, what were you laughing at me for? I am notorious in my family. Jim and I had been married. Oh, we were already in the blue house. So I'd guess, and I Patrick wasn't around yet. So it's one or two, maybe our second year married. Uh-huh. I understood this concept of cooking was timing. But I didn't have enough cooking skill to be. So I had come up for Thanksgiving dinner. I had reverse engineered a, okay, so turkey, I wanted everything to come out on the table at the same time warm. Mm -hmm. So turkey was, you know, the final thing that came out and I reverse engineered everything. Okay. And so this is going to take this long. So, and I did, I had a checklist. My, my parents in particular, my dad thought this was hysterical. Oh no. Hysterical. Everything worked right up until the point I had not thawed the turkey enough. So the turkey took another hour and a half yep. to cook beyond what I expected. So, of course, all of my beautiful food came was dead stone cold by the time the turkey came out. Practice. Pra- there's just no substitute no- for it. Ed, experience. School of experience. Learn it no other. Yeah. When Lauren and I did our first Thanksgiving, she didn't know the difference between a frozen turkey and a fresh turkey. So she just thought you put the turkey in frozen. Like, this is how you cook the turkey. That was a disaster. I bet it was. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, the moral of the story, especially with cooking, is you just got to keep doing it. Like, right. you're not going to be great, especially no. if you're if you're really like sort of walking cardboard, into it. Cardboard, charcoal, yep. you will eat a fair amount of yep. it. Yes. Like, and, and that's okay. Like this uh-huh. is not so. This is not a skill that you just want to throw your hands up in the air and, and just move on. Like, from a cost saving standpoint alone, that's huge. Um, 
So I just keep keep on cracking. I at once it. tried to translate a lamb rack of lamb, you know, lamb rib recipe to a beef rib recipe. So six ribs on a lamb. I asked for six ribs on a beef. <laughs> oh, good, good. Let's just say I got extra food. <laughs> okay, we're gonna wrap this up in one minute. Ready? What are we cleaning? What are we cleaning? What are we cleaning? We gotta. We, you know, we're talking about. Well, my, we're talking about cleaning. So um, ah, yes, yes, yes. Really, right at the bottom here. What are we? Okay. Um, what are we cleaning? Okay, countertops need multiple times a day. Easy. Um, cooking surfaces, especially arranged, need at least once a day. Mm-hmm. Um, weekly, your fridge probably needs a good wipe down once a week, and then besides that, gives you a chance to just kind of pull everything out quickly. Um, throw away the green beans that are turning into mush in mm-hmm. your pro in the back of your produce store, whatever. Um, sink needs to be done every single night, at least. It really needs to be with the countertops and done multiple mm-hmm. times a day, but at and don't least, leave at least dirty dishes in your sink. Yeah, because they they smell terrible the and next day. And they look awful when you wake up the next right, day. Right, and they invite bugs and all that kind of stuff. Um, monthly cleaning pantry and high use drawers. Um, they get a lot of gunk in them, mm-hmm. so you know, just take everything out, wipe it down, put it back in. Um, then a couple of times a year, you need to do your oven. Um, you need to do your dishwasher. Basically, you run it on. Um, empty with um, you run a quick cycle on empty and um, if you have lime scale problems you can put a little bit of CLR mm-hmm. with the lime yep. scale stuff in there um, and that's kind of it since yeah. we're on the lightning round yeah absolutely and I, the only thing it, in case it wasn't self explanatory when you clean the fridge do your freezer at the same time mm. I would just say that as well yes mm-hmm. um, but that is that. that's basically it and I knew it was going to be a long one you were correct again his record stands yeah so um, if, if you're yeah if you're keeping track at home we're mm-hmm. uh, you know it's not really a fair bet though because I'm the host I kind of drive it so I'm like well I think I want to make this one a little bit longer make this one a little bit shorter in any case guys thank you so much for being with us today hope that you got a lot of information we certainly had a lot mm-hmm. of fun doing it um, if you have any questions please feel free to comment on the website you can hit up Leslie on Twitter at Leslie Loftus TX Tex. And you can contact me on Twitter at Ryan Talon, R Y A N T A I L L O N. Looking forward to your feedback on this one and uh, enjoy the journey that is cooking because it actually is really fun. Like yeah. it, it really is. Once you start learning what you're doing um, and you start to be good at a couple of signature right. dishes, like, it starts to really be fun and people it, get really impressed like what you can do and you want to do these things like host absolutely. parties, have people over. It's just a different different mm-hmm. atmosphere. Cool. So with that. Yep. And apparently we're going to make a, uh, an episode out of menus, which totally fine. I can pull a whole episode out of creating a menu and yep. shopping list. Absolutely. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Well, thanks for being with us and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks Bye-bye. a lot.